Hi everyone, I'm Rick Zanotti and I am in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii, precisely Waikiki Beach. In fact, we're at the Waikiki Beach Hilton, which is a great hotel if you're ever here. Now behind me, we tried recording this earlier, but it got a little too uh, problematic. <laughs> we didn't have the right lighting. Uh, anyway, we are here. It's getting dark. It's sunset out there. Not too much you can see probably. Uh, we've been shooting all week for about seven or eight days with the Panasonic G9. That's the camera that's filming me right now. This is the Panasonic flagship for photos. However, it also is a great video camera as well. It does a really good job. Now, I'm in a pretty dark room right now and there's not much light behind me and I'm lit by just a very small uh, aperture Amran light. It's a very small Amran light. What are my impressions of this Panasonic G9? It's a great camera. It is easy to learn. It's very easy to uh, set. The ergonomics are incredible. I wish Sony had ergonomics as good as this. Uh, it's got a good monitor, good viewfinder, uh, very similar to the GH5, but it's a detuned version, if you will, of the GH5. Uh, it doesn't have all the video characteristics of the GH5, but who cares? Not everybody does cinema work. This is a perfect video camera for a lot of corporate videos, for interviews, for anything else you may be doing with this camera. It'll do a very good job of video. It's only got a 30 minute limit on video, but how often do you really shoot more than 30 minutes unless you're shooting an event? In which case, it's also pretty easy to stop and start when you hit your 30 minute mark. You probably won't miss much in most events. Uh, or use a GH5 if you really have a need for more than 30 minutes. Pretty simple. Uh, most of the time, most people are not shooting a long time at once. So as a picture camera, this reminds me a lot of the Nikon D750 I had, which I sold about a year, maybe almost two years ago now. Great camera. This takes pictures that rival it in many, many ways. It's a micro four thirds camera. It's not full frame, but the quality I'm getting out of this is pretty impressive. It has pretty good high dynamic range probably the best in the Panasonic line. It also has fairly good low light, considering I wouldn't call this a low light monster, but it does pretty good job in normal low light situations. Let's face it, most of the time we're not shooting in pitch black uh, environments. And if we are, we probably wouldn't be using this camera anyway. Um, I have some of the Sony cameras, including the Sony A9. We've got the Sony A7R III, uh, which is a great 42 megapixel camera. Uh, we have the Sony a6500. We've got two Panasonic GH5s as well as a GX8, uh, an older one, and, and several other ones. Plus we've got lots of camcorders and some other cameras. This, this competes very well with all of them. Uh, I've been very impressed with the quality of the videos and photos it takes, especially photos. Uh, very, very nice camera. Anyway, You'll be hearing more from me on the podcast once we start. Have a good one, everyone. Ford Tech Down Over. I'm Rick Zanotti. We'll talk soon. You're on. Hi there. That was shot a week ago today in Honolulu, Hawaii, actually in Waikiki. And if you notice, that was pretty tungsten-like as far as lighting goes, because that whole room didn't have one bit of daylight in it. All the fluorescents were tungsten, and in a way it was good because it showed a little bit of the background, and you could see we were on the 32nd floor of the Hilton on Kuhio uh, Boulevard or Avenue. I'm not sure what that is. And uh, you could see that th there was daylight outside that was getting dark. <clears throat> So anyway, we had a week's experience with the G9. Now this is the one we shot with. This is ours, we bought it. We paid for it from Sammy, Sammy's camera in Los Angeles on Fairfax. They're a great camera company. We uh, got this actually from our sales rep, good friend, uh, Larry Leiretana, L-E-Y-R-E-T-A-N-A, -E -E Larry Leiretana. He's been our rep for about 17, 18 years. So we know Larry well, he treats us well, and we've had, we bought a lot of gear from Larry. And anyway, this was really not available anywhere. B&H didn't have it, nobody had it. But the Panasonic rep happened to have one in his car. Larry told him we were going to Hawaii, we wanted to do a test of the camera live, 
and he got us one. He had one in the car that he could sell to us, and it was brand new. So we got lucky. Thank you, Panasonic. Rick, I'm not sure what your name is, but thank you for that. We appreciate it. Larry, as always, uh, we appreciate your help in doing everything. And if you need anything from photography, video, lighting, anything, rentals, go see uh, Sammy's camera. And they're also at www.sammys.com, S-A-M-Y-S.com. We love Sammy's. Great place. So anyway, let's take a look at some of the shots. We, we didn't do anything fancy here. In fact, I deliberately didn't shoot with any filters. Usually we would have a neutral density filter, a variable neutral density, maybe a polarizer that's also circular, or um, uh, what else would we do? Those are pretty much the two we usually use. We don't use um, any other kind of filters. And one I couldn't find any in our stock that worked with these particular Panasonic lenses. We were a little off and I didn't have the, uh, the step up or step down rings to, uh, to adjust. So we went without any filters figuring, ah, it'll be pretty blue. Right, it wasn't. It was very overcast the whole seven days we were in Hawaii. Had rain quite a few times. Um, got a little bit of blue the last day and you'll see that in some of the pictures we took. Now, I'm looking at some pictures right now. If we go full screen, um, so what are we looking at here? Which one's this one? So this is LAX. It is the runway. Yep, this is right before we left. Is that the video? Oh, should I bring up the video? This is a picture. That's a picture of the runway at night, probably about 8, 9 o'clock at night. And um, we were trying to see how the camera did in low light without any real twist. Uh, again, we're in a hotel room. I think we're on the 11th floor. Uh, and it was okay. It's funny. We're at the airport. I'm looking for the plane sounds. I can't see them. There's not, I'm looking up in the sky going, where are these planes? Not realizing that our hotel is at probably a 45 degree angle to Century Boulevard, which is what takes you into the, uh, which is parallel to the runway, basically. So I'm looking up when in reality, we're literally parallel to the runway end. And that's where the planes take off and land. And I think we have a shot I took real quickly of a plane coming in. Do we have that one? Here it is. And you can see the plane coming down right there. And we got lucky taking that shot. Because again, I kept thinking, wait a minute, where are the planes going? They're on the runway. So that was interesting. We were there at night, so we didn't really have any daylight to, to see where the runway was. We probably would have seen it during daylight, but at night it just lights. But I did notice lights change colors, depending on whether they're coming in or going or whatever. So that was sort of interesting. Um, if we go on to the next shot. So this is in Hawaii. You're looking at that building sort of, there was this building sort of in front of your hotel that yeah. had interesting <clears throat> windows on it and an interesting shape to it. Yeah, and again, if you can tell, very overcast, very, it was glary. That's why I was, I was dying to have a neutral density. And by the way, we went all around Hawaii, at least on Oahu, looking for somebody who carried one. Nobody carried one. So come on, Hawaii, get with it. You're a tourist stop. You should have lots of equipment. People had neutral densities, but they had like three stops, four stops. They did not have any variable that I could find anywhere. And, and they didn't have polarizers the size we had. So we gave up. We just said, okay, we're going to do the best we can with what we had. All of these pictures are not touched up. They are straight out of camera. Um, and these are, I think, JPEGs, right? And yep. we're looking at the JPEG. So this is how it renders JPEGs. I did not shoot raw on purpose. We wanted to see what came out of the camera as it, as it came into the camera. All right, so what else do we have here? Some more shots of, of our 32, our 32nd floor view of uh, the Waikiki Beach. You can see the beach kind of in the uh, center down over there. Let's go to one of the other shots. There you go. Yeah. So, and the ocean was really quite nice out there, but if you notice, it's not blue at all. Um, we'll see that a little bit towards the end when we have better weather, but what do we have next coming up? And here it's, it was a little clearer here. So you're starting to see blue ocean here. Yeah. This is sort of a, a, a test of what it was like out of our 32nd balcony, um, in different lighting conditions. Um, and again, we had no special lighting with us. We had no, no filters. So it is what the camera could do. The camera actually shot pretty well at night. To, to our surprise, it shot surprisingly well without a lot of noise. Let's 
let's see what do we got next here you took some buildings i think when the sun was cr creating a lot of shadows on yes. them so you were seeing the the contrast that you were getting uh, in shadow and in these areas that might normally be burned out, but it looks like you got them pretty well. Yeah, we got the. We had to our ISO. We had to use a little bit of ISO. Uh, for the most part, we were shooting at pretty high shutter speeds, um, just to make sure we weren't burned out. On some of the pictures we had, we burned out pretty badly. We made some adjustments, and and were able to to shoot fairly well considering. There, there was a lot of buildings there. These are bright buildings. They're not dark. So when the sun hits them, they, they go almost invisible in front of the camera. And uh, short of the windows coming in, we, we were able to get good contrast, partly by waiting for some sunlight or at least the sun coming out in a way that was going through the haze. And, and again, closing the shutter, trying to close. We tried to keep the... Uh, we, we, and I think on this one, we may have been using primes. Uh, we shot with three lenses. We shot with the 25 millimeter uh, prime from Panasonic, Panasonic Leica. We shot with the 12 to 60 millimeter Leica. That's the only zoom lens we had. And then we shot with the um, 17 millimeter. So that's equivalent to a 35 millimeter, equivalent to a 50 millimeter, and equivalent to up to 120 millimeter lens. So we had a pretty good variety of lenses, but we didn't have anything that was a long throw like a 70 to 200. I left that at home. I didn't want to travel real heavily. And yet, even with the six, with the 12 to 60 millimeter, we got some nice zooms. Uh, you'll see later on some of the videos we took. Let's move on to some of these shots. Um, so these are all different times, different sun, different lighting conditions. Some really cool buildings from where we were, or some different ones. Some of them were bulky. Some of them were nice. Um, now this is... Oh, and these are... This is Pally Point. This is, I believe, when we went up to the Pally Point where you could actually, they say the, the, I guess the old legend is that some child jumped off or got thrown off and then the wind blew her back and she was cured of whatever. Uh, I'd be cured of fright if I did that, I guess. Uh, it's a pretty high jump, but it was beautiful. Again, to, this is actually all ocean over there, which you're looking at, but unfortunately you couldn't see it because it was so bright that the ocean was kind of invisible. You, you can barely see it. But it's a very pretty place, and you notice that there are pretty good details in the mountain, in the hills around there. Not bad, considering we were really struggling with light here. It was rainy. It was drizzling when we were there. The light was bright on one side, dark on the other. Uh, there's some other shots, I think, where we can probably see some of the other stuff. I think there were some people shots and, um, and maybe some signs. Let's see, what else do we have there? Um, these are already the mall. Oh, so now we're at the mall. This is the Alamana Mall, one of the nicest malls we've been to. This is the biggest mall in Oahu, and it's a place to go. It was drizzling that day. And again, not very bright. And this is the camera basically shooting outdoors and indoors. Outdoors was a lot of it. Well, it's, it's partially covered. There was a lot of overhangs, and then you have a, a center area, which is pretty wet because it was raining. But you notice that a lot of the details are coming through in the shots. So we have a lot of architecture shots. And it's a pretty mall. The architecture is interesting. There's a lot of windows. There's a lot of ledges. There's, there's things that are there for you to notice. And overall, nice mall. Very upscale. There's a lot of nice stores there. And, uh, you know, wherever you see an Apple store, Windows stores, or Windows, I mean, come on, who cares about Microsoft Windows as far as a store? But Microsoft had a store there, and it was full. Apple stores were full. There was a lot of cute stores uh, and definitely some really high-end stores. So this is a, a very pretty mall. And we were taking shots, some of people, some of some of the architecture and, and the things around it. Uh, did we have some videos around here? I believe we did. Let's see. Let's see. We may have some videos here. There's just a video of some of the architecture there. Everything was taken by hand. IBIS was turned on, the in-body image stabilization, and uh, the camera performed beautifully. A lot of things looked like they were on gimbals. So you can see the escalator up. Is that a video or a picture? This one is a picture. And I think we may have had a video of that one, but I'm not sure. I didn't. Maybe I, not. We don't have one here. Yeah. But you notice the areas that are bright and the areas that are contrast. There was some, some, I wouldn't say sun, but there was some definite 
and the lines, it's clean. There's not a lot of noise there. I did have my ISO, but it wasn't probably more than 800 or 1600 here. I kept the lens fairly, I kept it a little bit close so we would be mostly in, and I'm sorry, the aperture. I kept it fairly close so that we would have everything in focus. Otherwise, you'd get just very blurry shots, except for what you're focusing on. So after these, we have some more from the balcony at the hotel. Again, slightly different lighting conditions. Here, we're getting clouds coming in. And you took this shot of sort of all of these buildings that were over to your right here. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of this architecture. <clears throat> That's heading well. towards downtown. It's still Waikiki, but it's heading towards a downtown way. But you notice as he zooms in, there's quite a bit of detail on window ledges and balconies. And it's actually rather amazing how much it picks up. Now, I had a Nikon D750. I've had full frame um, uh, Canons like the 5DSR, which actually Harold has. I sold mine to Harold. Yeah. And that 5DSR captures pretty much the same amount of detail, but it's a little sharper maybe, or it gets a little deeper into the detail. But it is amazing how a micro four thirds camera can get into some of that detail and it's not bad. It's, it's actually really not bad at all. The, the, the magic of physics and micro four thirds. Yep. And next. Uh... It's still kind of overcast. Ah. Here's where we saw some cloud formations coming in. Now, this is kind of cool. Some very pretty cloud formations coming in. It was probably getting towards later day. Um, and this is kind of cool because we were getting a, a really nice effect. And you could still see some details on the building, even though it was silhouetted by the clouds, which were very bright in the background. There were some pretty views. And you notice not too much noise on the pictures. It's handheld. Again, that building was a good block and a half, two blocks away from us. That was probably shot, I think it was shot with the 12 to 60 millimeter, but I'm not 100% sure. Probably. It may have been the 25 millimeter, which is basically the 50 millimeter. The G8, the G9, I'm sorry, focuses very, very, very quickly. It does a great job of focus. You don't wait at all. You click, it's done. People complain it's got a sensitive shutter. It's not that bad. You know, sometimes you'll get a shot you don't want, but frankly, you can control that if you're just gentle on it. Now, here's a nice shot. That building is one of my favorites. Just kind of Let's see if we can in there. And you can tell a little bit of shadowing underneath. Uh, it's just some interesting buildings, and yet you can see a little bit of the ocean. It's not as gray as it was, but it's still not 100% blue like it normally uh, Waikiki is beautiful. Uh, now, mind you, we live in Southern California, and we're beautiful too. So if you go to Hawaii, you don't appreciate it as much as if you don't live anywhere near ocean. Our coastline is gorgeous. So what do we have? So this is the um, view between those buildings of the... Uh... The ocean. Well, oh, no, no, that's... Uh... The, um... Um, we know what that is. That is, um, <laughs> we're both drawing a blank on it. I was there too. I should know this. Um, <clears throat> it is, oh, it's a famous little mountain. Um, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll remember later. Some of these buildings at around sunset, I think. Mm -hmm. Now, that was a really pretty part. Sunset was usually pretty attractive. Now, here I think we were in the darker side, right? Yeah. It was starting to get darker. Um, there's a lot of natural light hitting the buildings at this point. And then eventually we're going to see a little bit more uh, contrast and everything. These were taken throughout the that seven days we were there. We took actually about 500 shots total. Now, did we have any videos of the ocean as it was coming in? Um, the waves coming in? I thought we did. Yes. So we, we have go. some videos that we took of the waves coming in. Again, we're about two blocks away. So here's just from down at the beach. So we zoomed in a bit. We're pretty far. That was 
right off Kalakawa Avenue, which is the main drag in Waikiki. And the beaches were not that full. I think we got there right between spring break. So even the seagulls were tired from spring break. So it was uh, an interesting time. So this is one that cloud formation just came in when it was a bit clearer in the day. Yeah. And it was really pretty the way this, the, and, and the interesting thing is you look at it by the time you get your camera and you take pictures, it changed. The clouds were changing so quickly, literally within minutes. And we were able to get some really pretty shots as they went through the sky. Literally, it almost, look at the angle of those clouds out of nowhere. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and to see that was just really pretty uh, while we were there. Very, very pretty uh, formations. And, and like I said, they're here, they're gone. And here are some... Uh this is when it was really getting clear and you were getting the really uh, blue, yeah, deep blue ocean. We're starting to get that deep blue ocean there. I don't think we ever caught any of the cruise ships, but sometimes you'd see cruise ships in the distance. The problem is when we did see them, it was so far out and so glary that we couldn't capture them well on the camera. If I had a 70 to 200, I probably could have, but it was home resting from us. So let's see, let's move forward. Now this is getting towards nighttime, right? Um, I the think the night the nighttime same. ones are coming They're after. Coming soon. And by the way, that's a very noisy view. If you, if you think it looks serene and quiet, just big buildings, it was noisy. Um, a lot of fire, a lot, well, let's see, fire, ambulance police a lot of activity in waikiki very dense uh population i guess there's a lot of problems when you get too many teenagers in spring break but there were a lot of sirens going on some nice expletives being mouthed at the at the base of uh, our hotel it was interesting um but the hotel was lovely if you ever go there it's the uh waikiki beach uh hilton on kuhio k-u-h-i-o beautiful hotel they have a place called the Mac, 24-7. It was a great restaurant. They, the enormous portions, but boy, were they good. If you go, have one of the local mocos. They're great. And here are our night shots. Let's see. Oh, I'm zoomed in here. So we can see all these uh, city lights at night. And from a dynamic range point of view, now I did not take any shots with the high dynamic range that they offer in terms of, I think it takes seven or eight shots and creates a 80 or 100, mil, 100 megabyte file. Did not do that on this particular shot. I didn't have a tripod with me that was for that kind of shot. I did have a tripod, but not one that I thought was stable enough. It was pretty small. But I'm sure that works pretty well, too, from what I've seen. Though, that only works when you have a very stable environment. Now, buildings don't move, but lights do come on and off, and waves and other things move, birds. Uh, I didn't take a picture of it, but in our balcony, it was kind of cool. We had, on many occasions, birds coming up and visiting us, pigeons, all sorts, and, and, and just about four different kinds of birds, and they'd show up. I'd put food on my palm, and they would just come and take it off the palm. They were really cool. I think that was actually the highlight of the trip, having the birds, nine birds at one time with us, cooing and just taking food off our palms. Well, let's see, my wife was a little bit afraid of doing that. I said, ah, they won't hurt you. And they would just come right to the palm and take the food out. It was really a lot of fun. Okay, now we have some shots that we took at the uh, poly point going through some tunnels. This was in, uh, we rented a car. It wasn't what we wanted. We got a Mustang. It's a rough ride. Uh, and so we tried the camera with IBIS on. It's still a little bit shaky, but take a look at the uh, at what it's doing. It's not bad. The, the video quality isn't bad. That was inside the car. We're filming. Enter the tunnel straight. And here's going through the tunnel. And here's going through the tunnels. In about a quarter mile. This is Enter near the, the Pali Point. Ahead.
And if you notice, as it goes from bright to dark to bright, it does a pretty good job of that. We were not changing exposure or anything, and it seemed to handle it pretty well. This is just driving around in that area, right? Yeah, so th um, this next one, I think, is just highway. We're just driving on the highway. It was raining. Heading back towards downtown um, Oahu. And again, it focuses pretty well. We're moving around. You can see we're bouncing a bit. It was, a, it was definitely a sports car. Eight-cylinder, rough ride. So that was the last of the driving videos. Okay. Now, are we do, did we do all the photos already? Oh, uh, yeah, we went through all of so them. Here's a photo. I think we have some other videos here. We took a, a video. You took a video off of the balcony there. Oh, just like a little panning of the uh, and area? You, you also took one of traffic from up there. Oh, yeah, looking down. Right, let's show that one. And you notice there's always glare. It, it really haunted us that whole trip of the seven days we were there only the last day before we actually flew was a little clear where you actually saw blue skies and blue ocean it was it was really pretty so when we landed back in la we went hey look we've got blue sky and it's gorgeous so so much for leaving paradise we were actually a little prettier that day but it was a great trip we had a good time the camera performed beautifully it really didn't have any problems doing what we asked it to do. Uh, the ergonomics on the camera were wonderful. It's very easy to switch your lenses. It's very easy to change your aperture. That's just, uh, am I on right now? Yeah. Uh, aperture is just your top dial. Shutter is your back dial. ISO is kind of like Canon. It's exact, in fact, the same kind of button. Press that button and then just use your back dial. That changes your um, ISO, white balance, hit a white balance button, real simple. Again, use your back dial or hit custom. It's a very easy camera to use. And of course you have this ability. So you can probably see what I'm seeing right now. This is what I'm looking at in my dark little cave. Harold and I are in a dark cave with lights. Uh, so that's what we're seeing. And that and right there is back. our Aperture uh, COB. That is our Aperture COB. That big moon-like orb right there, that is the dome. That's the um, the dome which really diffuses the COB, which is extremely... I think, what are we at, 30% right now? 35, 35 like percent that. on the COB. That's the uh, chips on board from Aperture. It's the, uh, what is it, the 120T, I think? 120D? 120D. D, daylight. Daylight. Beautiful. Beautiful light. Um, but having this screen, you know, we have, we have Sony full frame cameras. We also have the a6500 from Sony and we're just going, they're beautiful. They shoot well, but man, the ergonomics is so much better on the Panasonic's. Not, there's not even a comparison. They are better. Knock down, drag them dead better. Literally. If you could only do this with a Panasonic, wouldn't that be nice? I mean, with a, a Sony. Canon does this on some cameras, but not their good ones. Um, it's a shame. It's a shame that the Sony's not doing that because Panasonic doesn't without a problem. And the size of cameras are about the same. So it, it was quite a lot of fun having the Panasonic G9. And if you have a GH5, it's a very similar experience. I think photos are a bit better on the G9 for a lot of reasons. It, it is cleaner. It's got better dynamic range. Video... 50 50 this takes great video and it seems to have better focus but they're both good in video i'd say the screens are a little bit better on the g5 the gh5 the electronic viewfinder isn't as big but it's a lot brighter at least to me it was brighter i don't think they're the same intensity and the viewfinder is about the same though i think the gh5 has a slightly better not viewfinder but a lcd screen so those are the only downsides of this this is a just a great camera i've got the battery grip on it. it it has a hefty weight to it not as heavy as a let's say canon or nikon dslr but it's got a it's got a heft to it you've got enough to balance the shot out and it's been a very good experience well there you have it on the uh, do we have any other videos to show are we good with the videos i think we've shown them all okay so if you want to see these shots for yourself we're going to have in our show notes later there will be a dropbox a public dropbox set up so you can't delete it 
Uh, but you can download the pictures and take a look at them. They are JPEGs. Get a feel for what they are. Look at the properties. And uh, feel free to um, to take a look at them. Anyway, well, have a good one, everyone. For Tech Down Over, I'm Rick Zanotti, and I'm joined by Harold Muliati. And thanks again to uh, Sammy's camera and to Panasonic for making this camera available to us on a very short notice, literally two days, and uh, they did it. And uh, thanks to them, and we'll see you guys this Friday on another Tech Down Over. This time with Down, I'm over. We'll have Down with us. Have a good one. Bye-bye.